It's a night to say I'm joined on McLean's TV here with the new Glen Torn boss, Alan Kernahan. Uh, Alan, you applied for the job, you got the job, now you have it. What do you think? Uh, delighted to get the opportunity, uh, first and foremost. Uh, and now it's just a case of trying to stamp my sort of way of football, my philosophy onto, uh, onto the team. And to be fair to them, they've taken that on board as, as well as they can. We've had a couple of blips um, in terms of performances, but uh, but in terms of what I've asked of the players, they've, they've tried to give me and uh, I've been delighted with that. And we just have to, you know, take little steps. And and uh, if we do that, then we'll, we'll come the end of the season, we should be in a stronger position. Alan, I suppose, I know it's a cliche in life and indeed in sport, but you will need time to put your stamp of authority on the team, the way you want them to play, what you want players to do. You know, it's it's always the same when a new manager comes in. It's, I'm sure the Glen, the, the Glen fans will be delighted to hear you say that you think that you'll have them in a stronger position by the end of the season because Glen Torn are still viewed by many as a big sleeping giant within the game. Absolutely. If I look back to my sort of time here as a kid, you know, they were the... Uh, them and Linfield were the, were the two big teams and I think for, for the for the better of the league now that there's now four or five teams that are that you could say are the, are the Giants um, we're maybe sort of slightly down the peck in order them further than we, we would like to be at this moment but you know time you don't often get in football so to try and make things as simple for the players as possible uh, and to get an impact as quickly as possible is, is what we need to do. And uh, as I say, I've been delighted with the players' efforts and, and the way they're trying to go about things. They must be delighted too that they have a man now in the dressing room who has a wealth of experience. International footballer, played at the highest level in the Premier League. You've uh, been associated with so many clubs, both as a player, player coach, player manager. You know, such a wealth of experience, such a vast array of experience you bring to the position. Well, I think all really matters to the players is my sort of uh, experience as a manager you know what I did as a player uh, alright they might look at and maybe think oh, it would be great if I could do that but but in terms of what I did as a player is out the window now you know uh, it's what I can teach them as a manager and as a coach that really appeals to them and which is what they should be looking for and uh, I feel I've got things that I can bring to the table uh, for them to learn and to uh, and to become better um, so that's that's the plan. A difficult start for you, you know. You had a couple of fi fixtures at the very very start, which were by no means easy. So you're you're still looking your first victory at this stage, you know. And uh, obviously you'd be confident of getting that in the in the coming weeks, if not even sooner. But uh, are you hopeful for the future? Yes, yes, I am hopeful. Um, as we said, I see a sleeping giant. Um, we need to reignite the passion from the fans in terms of maybe getting numbers back and by what I think is putting a better product on the pitch uh, in terms of the way we play. Um, I think if we manage to do that, then, you know, uh, we will be stronger come the end of the season and, and hopefully maybe, you know, I, I've said that we wanted to challenge, maybe that's a little bit too far a thing now, reality is set in, but, uh, but certainly we can get further up the table. Your philosophy in football, you know, I was reading recently there, Rafa Benitez is now under serious pressure at Real Madrid because he's not playing the football, a bit like Louis van Gaal, not playing the football that the fans at United and Madrid expect. Is there an expectancy amongst Glen Torn fans that not only do they want to, to win matches, but they want to play, they want to play attractive football? That was always my impression looking at Glen Torn, that they always wanted to play football. Absolutely, and that's my philosophy as well. You know, um, being an ex-defender, I would like to keep clean sheets. But, you know, if we if we play a fluid, open type of football, which is nice and quick, then we might give one away, but hopefully we'll create more chances at the other end and, and uh, you know, maybe score two or three. So uh, that's my philosophy. Uh, open, fast, one and two touch football. So that's what we're looking to play. We're talking about a sleeping giant, a bit like you said, because you know, you've been off the radar for a few seasons, but that doesn't mean to say you haven't been involved with football. You've been heavily involved, certainly with youth football, in your time. Yeah, I've been back probably two years or so, and uh, when I came back, 
uh, through stuff I used to do with Glasgow Rangers in terms of their soccer camps that I met a couple of guys and they were involved in the, the uh, Glentoran youth setup. So I went in and helped them and coached the under 17s for nearly a season. And then towards the end of last season, I helped out with the uh, Northern Ireland schoolboys team, which was great. And, uh, and then this year, uh, I helped out at Glenavon at their uh, under 19s. And, uh, and then this opportunity came up and unfortunately I got it. So uh, I have a fair idea in terms of youth players, what's going on. Um, and that's the sort of thing that I think that I have a, I have a good strength in, in in terms of dealing with young kids. You know, I did it for six years at, with Glasgow Rangers, uh, which are now starting to benefit from those kids that, are, that come through that I've, I've mm -hmm. helped. And I'm not saying they're all my, you know, it's all not because of me, but uh, <laughs> and because of the situation at, at Rangers that happened that the kids were thrown in and, and they've done really well. And and, uh, and some are still in the team now. So um, I have a decent track record at that. What do you like man to man? Is that one of your strengths as well? Or what would you see as your strengths or even your weaknesses as a manager? Uh, well, I think the the one to one relationship is, is very important. Um, and also being able to speak to the players and show them exactly what we want uh, in a pretty easy format. Uh, I would say they're my strengths. Um, the one-to-one -one relationship is really important because you have to be honest with the players and tell them what's going on uh, and also encourage and you know let them show what they, they can do and, and be without any uh, limitations to that, you know, to, to really go and be free and uh, and express themselves. That's what I think is important for uh, for players nowadays. You know, there's an awful lot of tactics involved. So if if they can marry the two, then uh, you know we're on a winner. Alan, you talk about the fact that you're quite happy the way your players are responding to you, and it will obviously take time. Festive period coming up, going to be a crucial period. But can I ask you? Uh, I know you're only a few games in, but your overall impressions of the the standard, let's say, of the Irish League of the teams that you've seen and played uh, against in recent weeks. Well, first game was Crusaders, who uh, have their own way of playing, but are very, very good at it. Um, an awful lot of forward going players, so they get the ball forward as often and as quickly as possible, but uh, not willy nilly. You know, there's a certain mm -hmm. plan to it, and uh, and they were stronger than us on the night. Um, and then Cliftonville play in a, in a similar way that I would like to play in terms of uh, ball on the ground and quick passing and, and getting as many people forward as possible. Um, and then Dungannon were a little bit like uh, Crusaders in terms of getting the ball forward, uh, but tried to play on the counter-attack uh, an awful lot. So I, I, I think the three teams I've seen all have their strengths and all try and play to those strengths. And... Uh, in terms of the whole league, I think you know there was uh, an article a couple of weeks ago hammering the the standard of the of the league. But I would disagree with that and say the standard's pretty decent. Uh, you know, if I compare it to the first division in Scotland and stuff, it's uh, it's as good, if not better. Alan, interesting to hear you say that. Funny enough, I was subscribed to your point of view as well too. I've been covering the Irish League for a long time and doing a bit with BBC now and, and Radio Ulster. I think the standard of play, the effort, the commitment and some of the football played by teams in difficult conditions has been exemplary over the past couple of seasons and I think it's too... They're, they're too easy to kick. The Irish League's too easy to kick, I think. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you. Um, I think the commitment is, is massive from the players, you know. Uh, I think sometimes we just have to ch try and challenge the, uh, channel that in a, in a slightly different way, you know. Um, but as I say, I've been delighted with the attitude and, and, and the work rate of my players has been superb. If we can just sort of change a couple of things, then uh, then I, I think we'll be much better for it. You talk about enthusiasm and commitment. I can even tell just by sitting talking here, but you, you clearly are enthused by this position. You know, you're looking forward to this and really enjoying the challenge at the, at the Oval. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it is a big challenge. It is a big challenge, but it's one that I fully embrace and and, and looking forward to, and uh, feel that there's a, there's a there's a huge chance of uh, of success in it, you know. And uh, that's all myself and my staff are working towards. You know, I, I must admit I've been really impressed with the, with the staff that I've uh, I've inherited, and I wanted them to stay because 
I knew them socially, uh, but I didn't really know what they could do football terms, and uh, and they've impressed me hugely. They have a massive knowledge of the league, which is also helpful to me. Um, but they've all been great to a man, and uh, really looking forward to to getting some, some some success with them. You talk about the fans. You hope to bring more of them through the turnstiles. But I suppose, like every new manager, you'd have to appeal to the fans if they possibly if they will possibly listen to you. Just a, have we a bit of time and a wee bit of patience because it it just won't happen overnight. Well, that's easier said than done. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not so daft to to realise that I could just say a couple of things and they'll all come through. Uh, that that's a challenge. That's a challenge. But you got to you've got to embrace it. As I say, you've really got to try and grab it and and have confidence and and believe in yourself and that those things will change if 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 you get the right product on the pitch. I'm going to move you on now too because obviously you're an international player, played the World Cup, the Republic under Jack Charlton and uh, you would know both sides because you also played schoolboys with Northern Ireland and we're now in the in the incredible position in the European Championships we both have Michael O'Neill with Northern Ireland and Martin O'Neill with the Republic and both qualified for the European Championships. That's fantastic. Well, and if you add England and Wales to that, it, it's fantastic if you... Uh, uh, for the whole of the sort of British Isles as such um, but it, I think hopefully in Northern Ireland it'll be a great boost and a great addition to hopefully kick you know football back into in, into younger kids uh, yeah, I was going to ask you that do you think that it will have an effect like that or, you know like you know if you're involved in the game like that do you see it as something that will give a massive boost to the game here locally the fact that uh, uh, the Northern Ireland team under under Michael are, are off to France. Yes, I, I think it will. That you know, there's a, there's a huge um, bias. Well, I wouldn't say bias, but there's a huge interest in rugby in Northern Ireland, which is great and is a game that, that I enjoy going to watch. And uh, but you know, it it's taken a lot of the kids, and I, I think if we can sort of move that bias more towards football, then uh, it can only be better for football in Northern Ireland. Uh, both club and country. Were you impressed with Northern Ireland under, you know, whenever you were talking to Liam Beckett earlier, you know, at the very start, you know, I know Michael well, he couldn't buy a goal, never mm. mind buy a point, <coughs> never mind buy a win, and then suddenly it clicks. Yeah. That can happen in football. Can't absolutely, it? absolutely. You know, small margins. Uh, I think for Michael, he's been, he's been very good in terms of, he's obviously learned what he needs to do as an international manager in terms of, you know, tactics, and uh, and how they play but uh, he's also got the players on his side which has been huge for him uh, and they've all bought into how he wants to play and and uh, and then a little bit of momentum starts to build and build and build and you know pretty much unbeatable towards the end of the campaign I'm not going to put any um, too difficult questions because it'll be the things that we can't answer. But the festive period is going to be very, di- it's going to be very difficult and crucial. It's always significant, and you'll hope in that short period you may be able to put another stamp on your team, on the Glentoran team going forward. I would have thought. Yeah, just have to win games. Yeah, simple as that. Really, uh-huh. uh, you know, our opposition is going to be tough from one to one to the bottom of the of the league. So. You know, that's all, all we've got to focus on is winning the games. And I suppose it's it's like all sport, you know, you can play, sometimes you can play a brilliant football, lose a game, other nights you can be pretty poor and get the result. And I suppose in the heat of the hunt, the Glens fans and everybody involved, the Oval, the board, the whole shoot, they look at the table and yes. see where you sit. Yes, well, that's, that's, the, that's what we all look for. And uh, a slice of luck along the way will certainly help. Now, you won't probably... Uh, well, maybe this is a difficult question. Will you look for new faces come the new year? Will you look for other people who will maybe be more able to uh, employ the tactics and the style of football you want whenever you have a look around you and you, know, and you see what you have available at the Oval and perhaps what is available elsewhere? Yes. Yeah, we'll be looking to strengthen. <clears throat> I think if we can get two or three players in, that'll be a, a huge boost uh, and benefit to us. So uh, we're working hard on that already. And, uh, you know, come January, hopefully we can get two or three across the line. 
I know it's interesting people talk about, you know, you mentioned about four or five in Glentorn might have slipped, but, you know, the big game, not that anybody says, is still Linfield Glentorn. Uh, you probably have been there maybe as a fan, I'd say. Uh, you may have experienced that, you may have not, but you're going to be there experiencing it as a manager. That's going to be different, isn't it? Yeah, well, I was at, I was at uh, Windsor to watch the 1-1 the game, and I was sat in the Glentorn end. Uh, I was trying to be as inconspicuous as possible. <laughs> uh, and both teams, you know, I, I obviously felt the, the tension between the fans, uh, but the product that, that was on the pitch was good. You know, I, I thought we, Glen Torren were unlucky on the day, uh, the best of the game in the first half, and uh, and then after I'd left, I managed to get an equaliser late on. So, yes, I, I understand it's the local derby. So, uh, it's a, it, same as any local derby, you you, you want to win if you're on one side or the other. So, uh, you know, I, I know what that's all about. So. Um, I thank you very much for joining us here in McLean's and I wish you all the very, very best. Of course, McLean's are, the, are one of the main sponsors of Glen Torn and they would hope that you do particularly well. But look, it's been an absolute pleasure joining us here this morning. Thanks very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you, you very much. Great to see you again. You God bless.